scary. <laughs> <laughs> it asked me if I want to leave the meeting now. <laughs> you said yes. Yes. That one behind you, Jessica, is that, was that in the show? Um, no, that's an older piece. So. My brain just went blank. Okay. Well, um, okay. should we get started? Ding, 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 ding. Admit. Okay. Let's get started. We're recording. Um, so this should be um, like, I hope all artist talks that I'm a part of uh, a chance to learn more from the artists and in an informal way. So this is imagine us just sitting at the bar or <laughs> around the living room. Um, we all have a beverage of choice here. Um, we did do we did meet and talk about uh, how the we think the evening will go. So I'll just give you a um, review of how we're gonna do this. Um, I would ask everyone to mute yourself uh, unless you're talking, just to eliminate background noise. Um, we'll share the PDF in the chat in a second. And I'm going to do the, the video um, that Bridget made of walking around the exhibition. Um, that's two minutes. And I'm going to just introduce a few questions. If you have questions as um, we're all talking, please add them to the chat box and I'll read them after we go through um, four questions that we set up. But do feel free to add that anytime. If you have a question, go ahead. There's such a small group, um, <coughs> great, a great um, and perfectly um, RSVP'd group. It said 17 people would be here and 17 people are here. When does that ever happen? That never wow. happened. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so let's get started then. Um, I If I have to turn my video off for any reason, it's just because my cat wants something. So I'll be right back. <laughs> um, so um, I wanted to start by saying that um, I had been looking for a gallery space to do some pop-up exhibitions. And I was lucky enough that Annie Golick offered this space at 21st in Newport in the summer, but we had to space prep it. And I asked Jessica to help if she had time to help me. Um, and she quickly became someone I, I literally couldn't live without. Like she was the best at um, managing the space prep of that space. And just, I just saw how wonderful she worked. And I was like, this is great. Let's just keep working together. Um, and we had been working together on some collections management projects before, but I really got to know, like, I really got to work with Bridget and Jessica when they were um, in residence at Arlington Art Center. And that was such a golden time. That was a wonderful time of artists over there. Um, and I'm going to let Jessica and, and Bridget speak to that in a minute. But I, I just want to say that when I had the Jason Gubbiotti show in the space, I really wanted to have another exhibition in the space, even though I was technically supposed to turn it back over. Um, I was just going to use it for, for that show. Um, but then Annie, Annie was amenable to doing another exhibition, and I thought long and hard about who I wanted it to be, and I was like, you know, Bridget and Jessica, um, they're great artists, and they're very generous. And I made that post on Facebook, and so many people responded that in the times we're in, we just need people around who give us the benefit of the doubt and, you know, we'll get your back. That's how I felt. And I, that's how I felt about them. And so it was just natural to work together because after you've done as many exhibitions as I have, um, it can get uncomfortable sometimes working with people that you're not on the same wavelength with, um, and in that that moment, it was the absolute perfect fit. And I couldn't have, in my wildest dreams, imagined the exhibition would be so beautiful. Um, so I just wanted to say that brief intro. And then I'm going to um, try to share my screen and show this video. OK. 
Okay. Hopefully the there's no sound, right? Can everyone see that? Yes. Can Sue and Phil please mute themselves? That's it. Okay. So I'll stop sharing that. And then there's the PDF um, of the exhibition is in the chat box. Uh, if you want to click on that and follow along, you can, or you can download it and look at it later, whatever you prefer. Um, so it, again, if you have questions, um, as I'm asking this set of four questions, uh, please go ahead and just pop that in the chat box and I'll read them after we do these four. Okay, without further ado, I hope I said everything. Um, so Jessica and Bridget, um, when we started putting this together, um, I asked if you would help me draw out um, similarities in your work and you and you brought out things that I never would have thought of and some of them are um, are that you both have nuanced vignettes with with very specific placement of objects and forms um, there's a kind of a hidden narrative um, in both in both bodies of work what did having this show help you both to realize about the similarities and differences in each other's work Whoever wants to take that. Can I go first, Jess? Sure. Um, yeah, so just, I mean, going back, Bridget and I are very close friends. And at Arlington Art Center, we had studios next to one another. Um, so always around each other's work and at each other's shows and everything. But I think neither of us ever really thought our works are similar. 
Um, but having them in the space and discussing, you know, the statement for the show and coming up with the title and everything. Um, yes, we realized like that there's a lot of similarities. Um, and, you know, especially like you said that like where each piece really operates as sort of like a vignette or like a window into this kind of world that we're each um, building on our own. Um, and then, you know, kind of each artwork in itself sort of adds to the story. Um, and then of course the using specific objects, lots of objects in both of our works. Um, and I think for both of us, these sort of, um, they are specifically chosen, um, you know, by, by us, but you know, they're really like clues and extra layers. Um, um, so things to be like discovered within the work, um, like upon a longer viewing. Um, so I thought that was, that was really interesting. And then, you know, really the narrative aspect that we're both using within our work um that i really wasn't i didn't think about and maybe that became more apparent too just when we decided on the title of our work and thinking um we did we did not specifically we were not specifically referencing homer's odyssey um but in using that name uh personal odyssey um the idea of the narrative and the way storytelling is used um so it was it was really great to see that connection between our work. Bridget. Yeah, we pretty much said most of it, but um, basically, I also um, we spent a lot of time like we're really good friends and we had studios right next to each other. Um, and whenever one of us had shows, we'd be helping out at the last minute and everything. Um, so that was kind of a mistake on our part to do a show together because we weren't there yeah but we weren't really able to help each other out as much um but the, uh, the um we used to spend a lot of time together like uh working on our stuff in the same studio and helping each other and i never really put it together like jessica said that we had kind of similar I, I mean our themes are a little different um it was hard for us to come up with a name because um i was trying to go a little more positive <laughs> um, not that Jessica's negative, but a little more positive spin on things. Um, so we did struggle coming up with a name, but um, I feel good with what we came up with. And um, and we're both obsessed with objects. I mean, if you've been to either of our studios, you know we have a lot of stuff. <laughs> a lot of and stuff. I like to steal stuff. You know, like, I think we like some of the same stuff too. So um, yeah. Uh, how did how did you come up with the name? I can't remember. You said uh, I said it, but I don't remember saying it. Like a three hour oh. conversation of <laughs> going back and forth. We really wanted to call it breathless or something like breath, but it wasn't working. Yeah, really that had a sort of negative connotation. So yeah, we, we went against that. And I think you said it in one of our like first conversations because uh, we both took notes on it. And um, yeah, J Jamie said it. Just, yeah, we have yeah. some quotes somewhere that you said that was perfect for it, you know, like, yeah personal it was like a um yeah it was funny I'll, I'll find it later for you so personal odyssey on a um, strange characters and narratives and yeah mm -hmm. yeah well let's talk about process a little bit um can you each speak to how you made the work for the show especially in terms of collage which i think you're both doing in different ways interesting um I'll go, I'll be real quick. I take, I, okay. I take collect, <laughs> okay. Well, I collect objects, um, miniature objects of dollhouses and things. And um, usually don't know, usually I don't have an idea of where they're going. Sometimes they either have an idea of where they're going or I'm searching eBay in the middle of the night because I can't sleep and buying things. Like I, I took out my um, pink couch that I bought to show you. So I bought this on eBay. This is in the artwork. And it's literally like a piece of wood with this like weird fabric on it. But I just bought this because I was like, I have to have this. <laughs> um, I didn't know why. So I purchased it. And then um, so, so when I set up an object, I, I think of what I want to say in the room I'm making. And I, you know, set up all these teeny little objects 
usually a million of them that no one can ever see. And then I go and take photos of that. And um, I sometimes take iPhoto phone photos first, um, just to try to get my idea down. And then I try to match that with my real camera. And usually the iPhone pictures are like better because I think they take a different angle. Um, but I get more detail and more direction with the, the actual full camera. Um, so then I take a photo of it. I take, I probably take like 50 photos, 100 photos um, through a program called, um, what is it called? Capture One, which is like a computer program hooked to your camera. Um, take that in and then I go through and pick out which one I like. Um, but basically, um, I'm trying to combine objects that mean something to the story I'm trying to tell. Um, Do you want to walk us through one of them? I could share the PDF if you want. Um, sure. Just because, you know, I'm curious. Sure. I'm always curious. Like, I know some of the Hope reasons. It's one that I know what's going on in. <laughs> Can everyone see yeah. that PDF? <laughs> so um, I know which one. OK. Well, there's the pink couch. Yeah, there's hot dogs. Oops. I'm admitting people while I'm scrolling, so sorry. Um, so let's go to this one. Okay. This one. Maybe talk us talk us through some of the object choices and places okay. if you want. If it's yeah, not too revealing. yeah, that, no, it's good. So, um, so this series, what the whole series here was done um, in a dollhouse. That is a newer version of a dollhouse I did in a series in 2017 which was a rusted out dollhouse um, but it's the same exact rooms in it um, so i was trying to to um, conceptually i was comparing it back to that picture i took in 2017 um, so but what i did here is i i did get i'm going to tell you this is i try to fit things in the picture that i'm really excited about and in the back right is a little stereo system that I also bought with the pink couch and I could not figure out how to put it get it into the picture because I really wanted it in the picture um, and I finally got it to work but um, so I set up this room I I um, have had this sheep it's right here this little sheep hanging around with me um, I love that really ugly yellow chair uh, I, I set that up um, I set up a full bar and I have a lot of things in the background in the um, curio cabinet are some grapes and like uh, it was a bust. So it's like kind of like, an, uh, like your grandparents house or an old person's house that collects a bunch of old things. Um, and then the sheep just looked like he was um, longing for somebody. Um, so I was playing off of that of like, um, the drinks and then the broken glass in the front. Um, so the broken glass, the secret there is that um, as I was moving things around to take different views and pictures, that little glass carafe broke. And I was like, damn, why did that break? Because it looked so good where it was. And then I was like, I'm just, it looks perfect where it is. So like, so things happen when I'm taking photos and it's been like that for years. Um, like I let things happen that are supposed to happen. I feel like they're supposed to happen when you're setting things up and you have to be aware to accept them. I know it's kind of weird to say, but um, yeah, I'm talking gibberish. No, no, I think that's um, that's a good point. That's um, going with going with your whatever happens and your yeah. process is flowing and you're embracing the change and the difference and the unexpected, I guess. That's yeah. what I was trying to say. And then I also try to hide like little things like I mean, I guess you can see it, but in the bottom left is a little tiki mug that that's really dark. Um, but um, it was just like a little, um, it's just like a shout out to like some of my friends and things like that. So like, I, try to, I do hide some like secret things in, in there and the images that, you know, are, are fun for me. Um, Great. Well, why don't we do the same thing with um, Jessica? Do you want to do one of yours? Sure. Any preference? Um, there's so many. <laughs> I 
Do you have a preference? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm glad, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> As you keep going. Um, yeah. I know which one. Oh, okay. Almost there. I thought we were. I, have, I passed it already. Well, why don't we do this one? Sure. Final performance. Um, okay, so I mean, as far as process um, for this, I guess this body of work is like a continuation of work that I started in grad school and I started this work in probably, um, I guess, 2016. Um, so I've been doing similar pieces um, since then. Uh, so really, I'm using different inks. Um, I don't know, like 10 different kinds of inks that I'm using and graphite, acrylic paints, um, you know, watering stuff down and making marks on, you know, some kind of paper. I'm usually not canvas, but so paper. And in this case, it's Yupo, um, but some often it's watercolor paper. Um, so, but I'm using those in a really abstract way, um, like just like tossing them on there or, um, you know, folding the paper or whatever way to make sort of like abstract marks um, to kind of help me like relinquish control um, over the piece. Um, my past work, you know, prior to this, it's like 10 years of very um, meticulously controlled work that's kind of planned out in the beginning and sort of like a one shot deal, like to get it all perfect. So um, this body of work is, ve is very different. So I purposefully um, using this kind of abstract process to as a starting point um, and then responding to those marks um, and you know then adding um, the use of collage so I have lots of things cut out of like uh, various books and any book that I can get my hands on really um, so I have a lot of stuff already cut out and kind of organized by theme and um, then more stuff if I want a specific object I try to find it um, so then it's just really, um, you know, like kind of moving those pieces around and kind of seeing what um, emerges um, from that. Um, so I really, um, I guess, love collage. So I've really fallen in love with that process. Um, I think the idea um, that I, I feel like I cannot make a mistake uh, because if I glue something down, even with the collage, like if, if I think it's wrong for whatever reason or doesn't fit the piece, like uh, the idea in my head is I can just slap some other piece of collage on top of it to fix it. So it's like very freeing for me. So I, I really kind of, I, I don't second guess too much, like what to go where. I mean, I definitely move stuff around and even move stuff onto different pieces and to see what works and um, you know, and, and think about them and come back to them. But um, I have, it's a lot of freedom uh, to use, use the collage. Um, and then I'm, I'm using a lot of stuff like Victorian related imagery and objects. And um, like, a, so like another added thing of that to that is that, you know, um, like the aristocratic women um, of, you know, the later 19th century actually, started doing collage and you know in their photo albums and things and it was like an expressive freeing uh acceptable <laughs> um pastime for them and um really they were it was like very whimsical and satirical and they were doing these fantastical sort of collages so i find that aspect you know um pretty fascinating also and those are really fun to look at so i'm like influenced by that also um and i mean the work is is also surreal um in, in many ways so i'm influenced influenced by you know surrealism um more specifically like maybe max ernst um people could see um so i don't know and then yeah for the objects they so they end up being you know pretty specific and um kind of like you know like i was saying before that they are kind of clues and layers um so and 
and I ho hopefully it's like I like the idea that if you look at a piece longer or maybe a different day, you look at the piece like maybe you notice something that you didn't notice before. Um, so for for me that happens, and you know it's nice uh, to hear if it, if it happens for other people, but that the piece feels you know um, there's always new things to discover. Um, so it's kind of like this this uh, finding of lost things. Um, but the objects kind of are like a evidence of some kind of, of a life, a preservation of, of memory um, in a way. Um, so this piece uh, specifically, there's um, this kind of like long sort of bodily form and it's kind of, it's sort of like a basket, a black sort of basket on the, on the right side and within that basket box with bows on it is a rib cage um, protruding and kind of behind that and entwined with that is um, you know some remnants of victorian dresses and um, fabrics so to me that's sort of just like a this sort of body form sort of like a kind of like a toboggan in a way but um and then this like arching form uh, that it's sort of about to go through is actually um, a collage, like a piece of an of a rib, so a person's rib. Um, and so for me, this piece kind of it looks sort of like um, the white parts sort of act on the bottom, this landscape where maybe it's kind of snowy or icy, and that like this sort of toboggan bodily form is is like uh, sliding into the crevasse, I suppose, and. So it's called Final Passage, and it's the it's the last piece of the show, or sorry, sorry, final final performance. It's called. Um, so that sort of added kind of theatricalness to that, but um, so. Maybe and I not. I really enjoyed um, trying to speed read your your um, master's thesis uh, for <laughs> for your MFA. Of, yeah. Of, of the future world that is kind of created from these works. So I encourage everyone to read um, the language in the PDF. Um, you can get more information about that, but also maybe we can talk about that um, a little bit more. Um, but first, um, uh, you both have a very um, specific and um, important way of titling your work. And um, if I go back up here to some of Bridget's. Now, Bridget's, um, they both, I feel like the titling for both of you give away a little bit more um, of a hidden, almost mystery meaning of the work. Mm -hmm. um, but for Bridget's, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, is these are these are affirmations. Your titles are 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 almost like projections of an affirmation of like of what what you um, you give a title to kind of breathe something into being. Is that right? That, it is right. Yes, it's um, specifically with um, this work too. Um, like the last one with the sheep was called I, I, "My Dreams Won't Be Complete Without You." It's also supposed to be a little funny because you can also say my dreams might not be complete without you which is the the female or the um female lamb which is i shouldn't have given that away because that's stupid but anyway <laughs> but yeah <laughs> but yeah so like during so these are i i'm trying to be um project more positive and bring um for myself um bring out more positive things. In the past, I've done work about like relationships with a lot of men walking away from women. And I don't know what that means, but um, not that successful in relationships all the time. So I'm trying to be more, uh, I feel like what we make um, for me is what I put out in the universe with my art and the titles um, is affecting something. Um, so I, I try to say like, this is your the best thing I never knew I needed. And um, which, you know, it could be love of your life. Maybe someone gave you all those flowers or it's just the little bird. Um, I spent time in the pandemic where I, when I took these pictures at the beach with my sister and we spent a lot of, I mean, there wasn't much to do. 
and we spent a lot of time watching the birds. Um, mm -hmm. So I did come become more obsessed with birds than I was. Um, but we also watched, uh, if you read the statement, we watched um, a lot of my titles come from, they used to come from self-help relationship books or, um, you know, books I'm reading are like, like TV series. So we were watching um, uh, the new Disney movie. I know because it, it was a pandemic. So um, uh, the prince, what is it? The princess, the princess and, the frog. and the frog. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so, so those, most of the titles came from that, but then also some title titles came from, I was um, meeting with somebody um, kind of like a spiritual advisor kind of. And, and some of the titles came from notes that I'd written down too. So um, I, for my titles, I don't, I don't usually know what the title is until the work's done. Um, I don't try to figure out my work until it's done. Like what really, like I'm not that calculated about um, why I'm putting this flower here and this red, this pink truck here. Um, I trust myself to, that's just the way I work. And then afterwards I figure out, oh, that's what, I, oh yeah, that's, it's like a, a, a slap in the face, like, shit, did I do that? That's because I've done that a couple of times. Like, wow, that, that was good. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, I shock myself sometimes. Um, but these titles came from, from that. And um, what's another one? Like, like the, um, I kind of fell in love with the sheep and the frog during this. Um, I mean, that's Taco Tuesday too, but um, <laughs> Who doesn't Everyone's want in love with Taco Tuesday. <laughs> so like I kind of fell in love with those like little frogs and dogs. Um, yeah, so that's our little sheep there. Um, this was a very popular piece. Yes. And that one's <laughs> called I'm All In. I said yes. So um, you could interpret that however you'd like. Um, that did come from my spiritual person I was talking to about like being all in in life, but um, there's a way you could take it. Like I haven't eaten a hot dog in a long time because I'm gluten free, but like I do miss going to like a baseball game and eating a hot dog. And like, I don't normally eat them. So it's like, you could be like, yeah, I'm eating a hot dog or, you know, I don't need to tell you what it looks like. <laughs> and what, <laughs> so, cause I was like, you know, I'm all in, I said, yes, you know, like, Anyway, because there's a little bit of sex and and so it's a little erotic. All of our work. Yeah, I mean, there's a little bit of, of hidden sexual overtones in the work. I think they're hidden, but I don't know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Probably same with some of Jessica's, maybe. Nah. Kissing the princess breaks the spell. So yeah. I encourage you, everyone, to look through the PDF when you get a chance. So titling for Jessica. Let's see. Um. Which yeah, so uh, I right. mean, oh. any it's um, really I'm I'm just constantly writing um, stuff like related to, to the work in general, um, and then I'm you know just ideas just all the time, and or I'm reading um, a book or I'm watching a movie and like um, you know a word a word like you know resonates with me or a set of words and I write it down and it gets all added to these pages and pages and pages of notes that I have um, and like maybe maybe that will like feed in somewhere as it may be future title for a work or something like that so usually I just um, I have just all this stuff to kind of like sift through after completing um, pieces, but um, sometimes in the midst of like making the work, you know, I'm obviously going over and rereading um, stuff or still listening or re reading other books, and so I'm like those those sets of words and and written the written information is like is back you know in the forefront. So sometimes some of those stick out a little more while I'm while I'm making the work, and I kind of like will rewrite them somewhere and set them aside as, okay, this one is, is seeming like a, a good possibility for this work that's maybe halfway made or something. Um, so, so for the most part, I, I have all these titles. Um, and so they get assigned to the piece near the finish, near the finish of the work or when the, when the work is finished. Um, so, and then, and then it's, 
um, you know, I give them the title. So it's, I mean, for me, it's very fun. It's an opportunity to, to give, you know, um, more clues to the piece for someone who wants to read the titles um, and, you know, to look at them as a whole and kind of put that together and, you know, add, add meaning, it adds meaning to the piece. Um, so it's an opportunity to do that. So I, I, I really like that. Um, occasionally there's a piece that um, maybe I, I have the title. I really just like this sort of title and I'm hoping it will go with a piece that I'm making. So that would be maybe the one called Flotsam and Jetsam. Mm -hmm. And I just, um, I just really liked, it seemed like kind of like a whimsical sort of title. Um, and so I was like, when I, when the piece was started to be made and there was like a lot of space in it and the stuff and the, um, inking seemed scattered. And once I put a few pieces of collage down, yeah, there it is. I kind of realized this could potentially be flotsam and jetsam. So I was kind of excited that that sort of worked out like this, this will likely be flotsam and jetsam. And then it took it took that on, on more and went in that direction. Um, so so that helped, you know, inform the piece more so like, OK, this is I want it to be flotsam and jetsam. And so I will try I'll try for that a little bit more. Um, and so uh, that, that was so you had the title, you had the title flotsam and jetsam just floating around on your notes. <laughs> right, right. And then you started making this piece and then it emerged as, oh, I yeah, have, I know who you are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. From like the 30 that are looking like maybe contenders, you know, it was like, I really kind of liked, I was like, really liking those two together. Um, that, that that title. So yeah, it, it was like, this will be Flotsam and Jetsam. So, so it was great. It was great that that happened. And what is Flotsam and Jetsam? I can't remember. I know it's a... So it's like one that's being like when a, if a ship is sinking, Mm -hmm. um so it's like things that are tossed over um and then um now i'm like wanking i'm like um why don't why why can't i explain that in that piece um i know it's like a chaotic like like hodgepodge of things that are floating or something like that yeah so i guess it's it's um yeah i'm just like blanking of course as i, okay. I would at some point um so You'll remember in the middle of the night and then you can- I'll, I'll remember, yeah, and be mad at myself for, for <laughs> that, yeah. But um, yeah, so anyways. That's great. I mean, it's always a little bit of a, it, um, a mystery process, titling. Some people don't like titling. Some people never title. It's always untitled. Some people titles are so important and titles in this exhibition I feel are important. So I want to show an image of where you can really see the, um, you can't really see how colorful Bridget's work is in this photo, but you've seen it before in the, uh, the images in the PDF before this. And then Jessica's work, which is very like um, white, black, and gray for the most part. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about color. Uh, we, we talked a little bit about that in our planning meeting. Um, who wants to who wants to take that Bridget with your um, your color palette and then we added a nice pink element. Yeah. I've always not I've I mean I love pink. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I've never I never used it in artwork before I never let myself use it as much as I used it in this this series. Um, like I said before I was trying to take a more um, positive approach to previous work and I and I don't know if it was really intentional but I think I mean I was just trying to be more positive in general so I think it came out in the work I didn't um until I hung it I didn't realize well until I framed it, I didn't realize that there was so much pink in all the pieces together um but the you know color's always been kind of important to me um um bright these are these are very bright pieces um um they're cheerful they're yeah cheerful. yeah cheerful positive you know less dark um 
because things are bleak. Yes. <laughs> little, yes. little they tough are, right now. They are they are tough, and I you know just trying to be more um, bright and and just allowing myself to have fun. Like I had not made work or wanted, like we were talking about this, I didn't want to make any work after, um, it was the same thing after um, 9-11. Um, I used to make artwork about um, airline safety cards and airline and airplanes crashing, and I couldn't make work forever after that. Um, and um, I think Jessica's the same way with, we need pressure in order to get a, our, our work done. Um, and, um, I'm not one of the artists that can just go in and make work every day. Um, so this was, you know, just trying to make some work and it, it was, you know, it's, it wasn't a great two years, um, but I felt um, with you giving us this opportunity and it was pretty quick. Um, I just wanted to allow myself to have fun. And that's why I did the hot dog, like um, the hot dog and the, I mean, who, and the margarita, like who takes a picture of a margarita, but like, <laughs> I love margaritas and I love, I have the miniature margarita. I have like a whole little setup here. You can't see, but I have my little miniature margarita with me, you know, you know, like it's just fun stuff. Um, and most of the stuff I photograph is bright too. So yeah, just trying to be positive, putting positive energy out in the world. Thank you. Yeah. Very, very needed. Very, very needed. Um, Jessica, what do you think and, of the, the use of color and um, not color? And I'm doing the opposite. No, I don't know. <laughs> no, Bridget, um, <laughs> well, I mean, your work too yeah. is a different, I mean, yeah. uh, your work is a little, um, more serious. Mine's well, a little more playful. I mean, if you really, like, if you, if you know the secrets, depends. if you know the secrets, I mean, I, I, love looking at your work and I find it like playful but I know there's some parts in there that are like um serious like um yeah go ahead it's your yeah. It's well your <laughs> um yeah so I guess I I have made very colorful work for different series in the past but um for this body of work um specifically yeah the work is all um black and white um so I think for me, it's like I'm kind of talking about a dreamscape, um, sort of like this fantastical sort of world, um, kind of lost world, fallen world. And so the black and white um, shadow and light, um, I think, helps helps that come through. Um, and I feel like in some ways, too, like it also maybe can offer a sort of elegance um, to the work. and. And then I'm using so many different things within one piece. Like this piece has a fab, a piece of fabric that was cut there in the center that the flowers are fabric. So it's got fabric, it's got cut collage, it's got drawn elements. It has like a 3D piece of watercolor <laughs> paper in the bottom left that's little mountainous shape added there. Um, it has all this different inking used. So like to kind of, to make all these elements um, kind of congeal better to get, you know, work, work better together. Um, it helps to have this, um, you know, black and white. And, um, and then also it's sort of like, I mean, it does point to a sort of like a sadness um, or like a morning, morning uh, death um, or sort of a ghostly appearance. Um, so that kind of works with what, um, what I'm talking about in my work, the narrative of my work. Um, so yeah, so I mean, it's, it's, it's all black and white, but I'm using, you know, cool, cool grays, warm grays. And so it's kind of fun to, um, to work within those constraints. And it really created a nice balance in the space. I'm gonna stop sharing to see if there's any questions in the chat. Go ahead and drop any questions in there, or you can just say them, unmute yourself if you're muted and just ask a question. Um, I will say that um, seeing the work in the space is always like the best feeling um, because you can, we didn't have a lot of time. We didn't have like a floor plan created or, you know, um, virtual placement of objects or anything like that. But um, I had faith. That's a lot of what I go by sometimes when I'm curating is a, a, just a gut hunch. And I hadn't even really seen your new work, Jessica. I'd seen a few things. Um, mm -hmm. I stayed over a couple of times when I was in town 
and um, I liked what you were doing. I saw how meticulous um, your setup was, and I was just, I was really curious. I was like, I wonder what this will look like, and and I went from talking to um, Bridget and Jessica every day, several times a day, to offering the show to them and not hearing from them literally for like four <laughs> weeks, like not even nothing. <laughs> we were busy. Little, a tech, yeah. little text here or there, like "Hello, how are you?" Doing? And then, <laughs> right, <boom>. right. <laughs> they were in the woodshed getting this together. Um, and really, I think that's what you're talking about, Bridget, when you talk about you need a little pressure to get a show together. Yeah. And that's also something I knew I wasn't giving you a lot of time. And sometimes you have to select the right artists um, if you don't have a lot of time and you know they're going to be able to pull it off um, rather than having, you know, a year. But you had you had all of the foundational pieces. You had you had shot a lot of the work. Um, yeah. And Jessica had the 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 raw pieces to put together, but you really both did a lot of work in a very short period of time mm -hmm. and framed it all yourself. And it was amazing and it was very well received. Um, how do you, how do you both feel? I'll just throw this question out. Like, how do you feel now? Shows down, got a great review. Lots of people attended, you know, um, some pieces are going to people's homes. Um, and it's great. Every box is ticked of a successful exhibition. Um, feel I feel very good about about it. What are your yeah? Thoughts? I feel yeah. I feel. I mean, I feel great about it. Even like um, all those things are awesome when the, the all those things happen. Um, but I was just um, happy to be making work again, and I felt a change in like my um, art spirit that I hadn't had for a long time. So um, it was the closest I think either of us had ever come well, to come to like not finishing. I was like, I don't know if it's gonna happen. Like, I was like, this is the first time I'm like, I don't know. I used to be able to do it, but I'm not sure. But we pulled, we pulled it up but I was like, I don't know. Um, Cause I'm getting older, I guess. I, pulling that stuff off, but, but we did it. And I feel, um, I loved the show. I loved going over to Gallery Sit. It was um, a great space. I wish it was still up, um, yes. you know, but it can't stay up forever. Uh, but I just feel like it, it brought, to me, it just, it kind of, um, uh, it just changed, it ticked, it ticked back that spirit that, oh yeah, I'm an artist, you know, I'm, I'm gonna make work again. So thank you, Jamie. Yeah. Yes, thank you, Jamie. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, the same, I mean, yeah, she. it was Jamie, you know, having faith in us to do this like you know and it reinvigorated our studio practice to to produce the work we have a deadline um we don't we don't have a choice you know after it was like two weeks in i was like oh we can't we can't <laughs> once jamie sent like the press release i was like oh i guess it's real now and we can't back out of this so so and I guess, it was only two weeks left. I was like, Jessica, there's only yeah. I was like the show hangs in two weeks. Yeah. I was like, I, was like, oh. I guess I guess it has to happen. So yeah, you you make you make it work, uh, I think at, at that point then. <laughs> but but yeah, it's always down to the wire. And that's I mean, I do work, I work that way also. And um the pressure of of that deadline um also helps me to like uh not second second guess my choices and um and really, I'm not I'm not later like, man, I wish I had an extra day because I would have done X, Y, Z different. I really never, never have that feeling. I'm I'm always like the piece came out the way I wanted. It all looks great. So, um, you know, it's like it's when you have that deadline, it's easier to trust, you know, the intuition um, and just trust that you're going to you're making the right choices. Um, that you know the pictures are finding their own form and you're just letting it happen um so yeah I, I just but the show was came out um it looked amazing and the space was amazing everything was 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 perfect it was with Bridget Jamie was Jamie was there it was like yeah yeah um so so yeah everything everything came together great yeah we have a question from Alexandra um, congrats on a great show and new work. Can you each talk about how you use, think about scale and size in your work, both in terms of what you are incorporating into your work and also how you determine the size of the work? That's a good question. 
you want to go first, Jessica? Sure. Um, I mean, uh, was coming off of like the, sh the show prior to ours was uh, Jamie um, showed Jason Gubiati's work. And I had helped Jamie with, you know, prepping the space and getting ready. But then I was also, you know, helped Jason some with like hanging his work. And um, then I did some some gallery hours also um, for Jamie. So I was in the space a lot prior to my show. And at that point, I didn't even know I was going to have a show there. But um, the wall that I ended up having my work on, um, Jason had, you know, kind of a series of similarly sized paintings on that wall. Mm -hmm. And it it like really worked for the way the wall was. The space isn't perfect. The wall had sort of like a, a you know, a kind of hump in it where it did it's kind of leveled and that went all the way across the wall so it kind of worked to have pieces that would lay above that kind of line um so with that in mind I um kind of purposely set out to make pieces that were kind of small um and to be sort of in a series like that and to kind of help the sort of narrative and have all these separate pieces um, and then I also knew Bridget was doing these large, these large photographs. Um, and so that, so we knew who was going to get which wall, like her large pieces made sense on the other wall, of course. Mm -hmm. um, so, so that knowing that ahead of time sort of like funneled me into making smaller pieces. I mean, behind me, I have a piece that is actually one piece of a triptych mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's pretty large. So the three are, and it's tall. So there's, there's three pieces that make up that. So, and that's a pretty big piece, but, um, you know, so, but I had a huge wall when I was showing it. So, um, it kind of, it depends on both, you know, I mean, you make the, I guess you, I'm not, I don't feel constrained by if like, oh, I don't have a big enough space to make a big work or something, or where am I going to store it? Like, I never think about that kind of thing. Um, if I want to make a huge piece, I'll make the huge piece. Um, so, but in this case, um, yeah, it made, it just made sense to do the small pieces. Um, and what I think also the question might refer to as well as actual size of the finished piece, but also the scale within from the collage elements, like the rib cage, that's very large. That's mm -hmm. like a toboggan versus yeah, so, like, so how does, how does scale work there? Yeah, so there it's maybe just kind of being more playful or surreal in a way, like obviously there's there the rib cage has, um, you know, the small ribs and then there's a large rib. So um, to kind of use as like a gateway kind of thing. So using objects in a way that, you know, some you wouldn't think to use um, per se and have them take on a new meaning. Um, so that's kind of like a, a fun thing to do. So. That's kind of the same, the playfulness of um, the, the size changes uh, is something too that um, we have that's similar. And um, I mean, I work, I photograph miniatures um, that I then blow up to be, I prefer to blow them up to be bigger than, uh, I try to, I would love to make them all life size, um, but I, I stick to this size. So trying to blow these objects up um, and what originally interested me about it was that when you blow these little objects up that are made tiny, you get to see all their details they have and all their imperfections and like these strange objects. They're like strange little things that are mold made or hand painted. Um, and that um, I'm also interested in showing that like little strangeness or um, uh, funkiness by like maybe an uh, like a piece that is out of proportion like there might like like having the the rib be too big like having like a shoe that is obviously way too big you know a high heel that is like size 15 or something in the house um, <laughs> to make you think like what's going on there um, so you know my scale is normally the same um, I do 12, if anybody really cares, I do 12, like 12 inch, one to one twelfth scale in the dollhouse is, is usually what um, I work with. Um, and I just look for objects that I have in real life in miniature. And then uh, sometimes it's things I wish I had owned um, or um, just trying to recreate. And then sometimes I buy in real life the objects I have in miniature too. So back and forth. Uh -huh. 
I think of the margarita glass and how large that looked and how tiny it actually is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We had a lot of margaritas over the, the summer. Yes. Yes. <laughs> over life in general. Over life. Yes. yes. Well, then I, uh, I think we can probably wrap it up. If people um, have any further questions, you can go ahead and unmute and ask them or we, we can just um, wrap it up and just thank you both so much. I'm glad that we've got to have a talk. It's recorded. It'll, know, thank be on, you. it'll be on the YouTube channel. So you're welcome. And um, great. We did it. One hour. Yay. Love it. Yay. All right. Thanks, everybody, yeah. for coming. Bye. All right. Bye. Thanks, Jamie. Thank Bye. you. Thank you, Jamie. Text you in a minute. Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> Text you in 20 seconds. The cat just woke up, so it's perfect. Oh, oh, good. Perfect. All right. Bye. <laughs> All right. Bye.